A couple different things, you know, there was a five hour delay in the travel, the, the field was a little bit bouncy, didn't allow for the games to, to play real well, and then the heat. Well, and the struggle for India to score last week, it's been a struggle for Carolina to score for the last month. After winning their first four matches of this spring season, they have gone just 0-2-3 in their last five. What has suddenly changed for Carolina? Well, I, you know, is it the change that's happened, or are they not the 4 nothing? you know, the team that wins their first four? You know, that's the great thing about a long season is you get to figure out the personality and where they actually are. Maybe they're a middle-of-the-table team. As you see highlights here of Carolina, you will see a lot of familiar names and faces that if you haven't seen them in Carolina, you have seen them play elsewhere in the North American Soccer League. Very much a veteran group, and T. Schipolani is as exciting as any player in the league. You'll see some defensive mistakes, though, at the end of this highlight package. And as we get you to their starting 11 tonight, a player that you haven't seen before, and frankly, we haven't seen before, has us very intrigued. Jeremy Kelly playing in that 4-2-3-1 in the middle there, wearing number 24. Brad, he's 18 years old. He's on an amateur contract. He'll play in North Carolina next year. I love it. And I tell you what, the confidence they have in him to put him right in the center of the park and control things, that's impressive. Again, our starting lineups presented by Honda Manufacturing of Indiana, official automotive sponsors of the Indy 11. A championship chance is at hand. We'll talk about Keys getting there next here on Wish TV. The official Under Armour match ball is ready. And very soon, a new member of the Indy 11 will be ready as well. We'll talk to him at halftime. Gerardo Torado spent the last 11 years with Cruz Azul and Liga MX. He's been on three Mexican World Cup teams. He'll join us at halftime. Time now for keys to this match, presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. And Brad, you say for the 11, it starts on set pieces. Yeah, I'll tell you, set pieces are always important, but they are extra critical whenever the, the day and the match is impacted by the weather, and that's what we've got tonight. The other thing is it, the 11 have to remember who they are. They're going to press. They're going to want to get this game and, and get the goals that they need to advance. Um, however, you can't forget who you are and what got you here, and that's great defending. For Carolina, They've got to be quick in transition. When they recognize uh, Indy's pressing and they have those pockets to counter, they've got to explode into those areas, and they've got to score. You talked about it in the pregame. It's been seven weeks. That's 49 days, one goal in league play. They can't roll into the offseason with that. Our match officials for this evening. Here's a good look at tonight's match referee. Marcos de Oliveira, Ben Pilgrim, and Maggie Short are our assistant referees, and Ali Banane is our fourth official this evening. Indy will head west, young man, for this opening half. They will kind of go into the setting sun, and that's something that they have kind of had other teams do so far in matches this year, have the goalie fight that sun going in this east-west pitch. Indy 11 heading towards the Brickyard Battalion in half number one. The spring season finale underway on Wish TV, and we thank you so much for joining us. These teams have evenly split their matchups in their two years as league rivals. Two wins, two draws, two losses. Last time they played was the season finale a year ago. A match won by Carolina 3-1. The last time they played here was the home opener for the fall season, July 11th of 2015. Wojciech Vucic, Eric Norales each had goals within three minutes of each other. And the Indy 11 won that match 2-1. to one. These are two teams that are both hoping to snap playoff droughts at the end of the fall season. Indy 11, this their third year, have never played in the North American Soccer League playoffs. And despite being one of the original teams in this league, as you look at John Bush's numbers on the season, Carolina has not played in the NASL postseason since 2012. Marco Franco was a guest of ours on Soccer Saturday earlier today. And immediately Indy throws more numbers forward. They know they've got to be more aggressive tonight. Needing to score at least four and win by three to claim that spring season championship. Lorea with the service. Good ball. Mensing heads that away for Carolina. Shriver, the lone man, working up top for Carolina. Just talking to Coach Regan yesterday, one of the things that he said that they were going to do is, is push Omar 
Gordon a little bit higher as an outside mid to make it look like they've got three front runners just to cause some matchup problems and then to work on getting Vukovic and uh, and Franco a little bit more forward. Good run by Franco, but Eamon Zayed, lots of other easy one at that gentleman, Akira Fitzgerald. He has spent the last several seasons in Carolina. Was in MLS a year ago, but returned to Carolina by midseason. Played his collegiate soccer at Wake Forest. He's one of the better netminders in this league. Crazy athletic. Yeah, you look at the two keepers in tonight's match, and you don't see a lot of height in either one. John Bush makes up for it in simply wily old age and experience as far as reading the angles. Fitzgerald, to use a basketball term, can jump out of the gym for two keepers both below six feet tall. That's a great ball by Franco. Zayed sends it across. Braun couldn't get there. Mensing will steer it out. And eventually Austin Deleuze will boot that ball back to midfield. Counter opportunities for Carolina, Brad. They're simply going to be there tonight, aren't they? Absolutely they are, and they're ready. You take a look at uh, Ab Abdelawe. They've pushed him up. He's a holding midfielder, and they've pushed him up with Shriver, so they're they're looking like they've got two up top. Mears dials long distance. Dylan Mears couldn't keep it on frame or barely in a BYB. Well, simply put, if you're maybe not that big of a soccer fan, you go, I, I wish they'd play more up-tempo, more freewheeling, freestyling. Tonight is going to be your game. <laughs> it's just because the Indy 11 have to put so many on the board trying to claim that spring title. This is going to be back and forth, up and down the pitch soccer. Yeah, and I think you're going to see a big game out of Justin Braun. I mean, when you start pressing more and you start throwing numbers forward, you need a guy with an engine like that, and it, it, the table is set for him to have a big night tonight. Well, Mark Gordon will take the throw in. Played a full season for Tim Hankinson at Montego Bay United this past year. Of course, Tim left during that season to join the Indy 11. Was named the MVP of the Red Stripe Premier League in Jamaica. Janicki couldn't get there. Mares the lead for Lorea. And now the 11 will reorganize. Great ball. Janicki heads it across. Braun looking for the back post. Just misses a bit wide left, but you like the energy. You like the thought level right now for Indy 11. Yeah, and I'll tell you, one of the great things about this, too, is, you know, Janicki knows that he's not got a shooting angle and he's not a finisher. So instead of trying to put something soft on goal, he heads it back across to give the 11 a chance. Justin Braun, two goals this season. The game winner against Minnesota on May 21st. The equalizer against Jacksonville on May 28th. In each of those weeks, he was named the NASL's Team of the Week, was brought. Played the last two seasons for Sacramento Republic FC of the USL after many years in Major League Soccer, including some time with Chivas USA. Vukovic on patrol, keeping that ball away from his much younger opponent in Jeremy Kelly for Carolina and draws the foul. Time now for our injury report brought to you by Community Health Sports Medicine, official sports medicine provider of the Indy 11. Smart and Reynoso are both out. Brad Ring is actually in the 18 tonight. He has not played in basically since, I want to say early May, since the Edmonton match. And Lavelle Palmer is getting close to healthy, but is not in the 18 tonight. Fitzgerald able to snare that one from Franco. The hope is that Lavelle Palmer will be able to play on Wednesday night when the U.S. Open Cup fourth round goes to Chicago. And Lavelle is one of the three former members of the fire on this club. I'm sure would love to be on the field against his old team. Yeah, not just a great opportunity to get him some minutes, get him match fit, and, and get him worked back into to training, but then also you know, got the added energy of that, that was his club. Marco Franco's been at that right back spot now for the last three matches. Zayed, team leader in goals with three, with the left foot. Fitzgerald wasn't really sure if that was going to the side netting or not. Had to get his hands on it just to be safe. Yeah, and you, you might be seeing a little bit of pressing from Eamon Zayed right now. I mean, those are two shots that he's taken that are, you know, not really a, a shooter's angle. And there have been guys that have that are later in the run fill in the box, and he's got opportunities to knock it across. And so, you know, Get the game calm down a little bit, let the personality find itself, and then hopefully he slots a couple of those over. You mentioned on that injury report that Brad Ring is back in the 18. I would say he would be available for very limited minutes if need be. Great ball. Braun. Great timing of the runs. Slots it for Gordon. 
He's got two options to his right. Mayer's back post, couldn't get there. Goal kick coming for Akira Fitzgerald. Other player that did not make the injury report and is available off the bench tonight. He's been battling a hip issue all spring season long. Sanisha Ubiparapovic may not be 90-minute fit, but I'd expect to see him on the field at some point in time tonight. Yeah, if the, if the goal differential and everything is within reach with about 15 to 20 minutes to go, this is going to be an exciting place to be. Throw in coming here for Carolina. Fans, when Indy 11 scores a goal the very next day, get free large fries with the purchase of large fries at participate in McDonald's, proud sponsor of the Indy 11. Buy one, get one free. Requires the Indy 11 score a goal tonight. And since they're thinking about trying to score at least four, they got a good chance at fries tomorrow. The flag is up. Yeah, that's a great, great step by Janicki right there. Very, very smart play. T. Shipalani was the guilty party. Do we already have a smart play of this game <laughs> for the Indy what, 11? This is, this is something that's going to happen when you press forward. That back line was exposed. There was a pocket right in front of them that Carolina played it into, and instead of putting themselves in a position where they're going to get a, a shot on goal, Janicki read it perfectly, timed his run, stepped, and drew Carolina offside. Smart, smart play of the game. Zayed, was it deflected? The answer is no. By the way, our smart play of the game is brought to us by the Indiana State Professional MBA and Plainfield move ahead. That's already three shots for Eamon Zayed in the opening nine minutes. Yeah, and he has knocked the ball early. There's been a couple of early serves over. Uh, Omar Gordon's had one. Marco Franco's had one. Zayed's had one. Captain Colin Falvey gets his head on that. His current and former teammate Nikki Patterson then plays it next. Those two along with Sanisha will be part of Povich, played together at Ottawa a season ago. And as is seeming the clay case with last year's Ottawa team, there's almost one guy from their roster a year ago that plays for everybody else in the <laughs> league this year. Drew Becky is that guy for Carolina. Be right back. Mayers plays it through oh. the left foot. Gordon. Fitzgerald stops it. What a save. That was the best chance at the first one so far for the Indy 11. Tremendous ball by Mayers. Oh, I tell you what, he saw it. Gordon was making the run. He wanted to slot that ball, and unfortunately it hit a defender, but fortunately it pops right into Gordon's path. He's going to have a big day today. He's on. Dylan Mayers, the leading goal scorer for the Indy 11 a season ago. Larea can't connect on that pass from Marco Franco. Akira Fitzgerald. Keeping one off the board here for Carolina. Mensing kept him on side. But big, Gordon's big touch save. was outstanding. Big, big save. He, he came out, he took two steps, which really cut down the angle for Gordon to find a window. This is Paul Black. He and Simon Mensing teammates in Atlanta a year ago. Looking for the back post. Patterson will put a boot to it which will give a corner coming up for Carolina. This portion of the match is brought to us by Community Health Sports Medicine. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. And Carolina cannot win the spring season championship. They enter this match some four points back. Tampa Bay was one of two other teams entering the day that in points could catch New York, but in terms of goal differential, to not have a realistic chance. Zayed got there first to steer this one away. So Fort Lauderdale enters their match tonight. Three points back of the Cosmos, but they're six goals back in terms of goal differential. Take him. Take him. Gordon off to the races. Tobin applying pressure. No one there to help Omar just yet. See it, see it, see it. Still fighting his way through. Great ball. Braun. Believe for Larea. Chips this one up, but really nothing there. Yeah, there's not, not the space for that. Not the space for that. This portion of the match brought to us by Denny Excavating. Denny Companies tearing down the path so you can build the future. Larea, not generally a guy that is going to be attacking player, but with everybody having free reign to move forward tonight, you're going to see some 
Names you're not accustomed to towards the 18. Here you go, here you go, fill the box. This guy you're used to. Broad looking for Zayed, couldn't get there. Gordon gives chase, Becky sliding tackle takes it away. And that's oh. gonna be a foul listed on Greg Janicki. Abuldawi, the offended party. Azmi Abuldawi with four assists so far this year. Alan Clark, the head coach with Carolina. He has been a cornerstone of this franchise. What has been their most successful time of the year as of late is coming up. That is the U.S. Open Cup. They will play host to New England on Wednesday. From 2012 through 2014, Carolina defeated the LA Galaxy every year in the Open Cup. And in back-to-back -back years, they won the unofficial Los Angeles Cup because they beat Galaxy and Chivas back-to-back. -back. It was incredible. And that wasn't a, uh, a softened squad. No. You know, the, the Galaxy, the Donovan, everybody was brought out. They just couldn't. They had their number. Braun of no concern to Fitzgerald on that one. Well, 13 minutes in, clearly the pitch has been tilted to the Indy 11, but nothing to show for it just yet. Tim Hankinson, head coach of the Indy 11. He was tremendously honest with me this morning on Soccer Saturday on 93.5 and 1070, saying, listen, we're going to start this match maybe with some of our basic tenets, but we have to press forward. We're going for this tonight. We're going to take chances this evening, said Tim. You count preseason and then the the 10 weeks of matches, and they've invested a lot of energy, a lot of time, a lot of work into putting themselves into this position. And so we, when you talk about, you know, do you, do you play, do you try and get the 4-1, you know, you have to. You've done too much. You're too close right now. Great ball by Lorea. Braun looking for Zayed. Deflected away by Mensing. A lot of things in the buildup and getting into that attacking third you're seeing that you're liking for the Indy 11 everything but the finishing touch very aggressive stepping to every ball Mayors couldn't get there this falls in the feet of Kareem Moses who spent the last two years in Edmonton and this is one you see Justin Braun here it, you know typically last week you saw him tracking all the way back to the 18 to help out defensively Right now, you know, he's got the green light to sit back a little bit and save his energy going forward. That was Abel Dawi, but couldn't find the connection on that pass. Tonight's yellow and red cards are sponsored by Morello's Uptown Bail Bond, your central Indiana Bail Bond agency, proud sponsor of your Indy 11. Patterson, Vukovic. Great touch. Zayed couldn't yes! get there. That ball finds the back of the net. There's one. Three more needed. In the 11 on the board. How about that for dialing long distance from Bukovic? Oh, I, didn't think, I didn't think Zayed touched it, did he? I thought he got ahead to it. I thought it was a diving header. We'll see. You know, this is, this is what they've shown. I don't know if they saw something on film this week, but they have been hitting that early serve. He did. He just steered that one towards the back corner. Eamon Zayed, his fourth goal of the season. What a ball. What a ball. That oh. assist from Vukovic, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. And you take a look at this. And last week, Mayers puts a ball into Eamon Zayed, and he was just too gassed to make up that other inch to put it behind the keeper. And on this one, he laid out. He knows how important it is. One down, three to go for the Indy 11. Zayed's fourth goal of the season. Take him. Braun again into the smoke. The lead for Zayed. Zayed plays it across for Gordon. He's got to fight the Hayes, Andrew, Becky, and through the smoke, the referee sees that the flag is up from our assistant referee. That's what the smoke is for. It's to camouflage that. Well, my apologies for shortchanging Eamon Zayed. From our angle, we sit low to watch these matches. I didn't think he got it at first. But clearly, he did. Goal number four of the season for Eamon Zayed. And won an open cup play as well. The Indy 11 can allow a goal this evening. They can give up one. 
but they have to score four. They've got to win by three. They're off to the good start. The right foot, not on target from Alex Perez. This Carolina team has struggled to score over the course of the last five matches. Those two draws and three losses. And I tell you, that weighs on a team. That weighs on a back. It's been seven weeks, one goal. That weighs on a goalkeeper. That weighs on a back line because they know if we give one up, they can't get it back. Interestingly enough, they scored five in 30 minutes in the Open Cup two weeks ago in beating Charlotte. The flick forward for Gordon. Becky able to fend him off and allow that ball to trickle harmlessly across the sideline. Seven NASL teams all advance to the fourth round of the U.S. Open Cup, which will take place on Wednesday. It's when the MLS teams enter the fray. The Indy 11 at the Chicago Fire. First things first, their focus is exclusively on this match. And I tell you, I like this strategy by the 11 as far as uh, Gordon, Zayed, and Braun is saying, hey guys, you know, we don't need you to defend. Save your energy because we want to try to get those four goals. Shipilati. Trying his skills on Vukovic. Ball chipped in, Shriver yep. flags up. Golden boot winner, Shriver, with Carolina three years ago. We have seen him the last two years in Tampa Bay, and while he got an impressive goal here, his first with the Rowdies back in 2014, just never seemed to find his place in the 11 while he was in Tampa Bay. Yeah, I, tell you, I think there were two things at play. One, he had an ankle injury. I think it was in 14 that really kept him sidelined for about six weeks. I think the other was Georgie Ristoff. It's, you know, it's very similar to Ramirez and Ibarra up in Minnesota. It's, they just couldn't find a rhythm to work together. On paper, it looks great. Let's take two golden boot winners and put them together, and we should score like crazy. But it, it just didn't materialize. Driver, two goals so far this season. That's a handball. Kelly got away with it. The 18-year-old showing a bit of nerves for Carolina. And he is on an amateur contract, one of two academy players that they have on their roster. He will play collegially at the University of North Carolina in the fall. The young man was a tremendous tennis player as a youth, suffered a back injury, gave up tennis, focused on soccer. Here he is playing in a pro match at the age of 18. Yeah, you sure you got that right? Line drive, oh. Bush is there. Oh, oh, oh. With the sun, too, you never know what's going to happen on a shot like that. Well, Brad, tennis can be a very taxing sport. Yeah, I'm not d denying that. I'm just thinking if you're going to have a back injury and fracture your back, it's probably more likely that it's going to come in a contact sport. Unless maybe you're playing doubles and you're running your partner or something. Those kick serves can be vicious, my friend. Okay, I'll take your word for it. This segment of the match is brought to you by The Room Place. Get it at The Room Place. The 11 have gotten one. They need three more. Carolina opened their season with those four consecutive wins. They started with the first match of the league campaign. They have the earliest start on April the 2nd and beat Minnesota United. That caught some people's attention. Mr. Janik, a heck of a ball. Franco, the target. Man, has Marco Franco taken advantage of the opportunity with Lavelle Palmer out of the lineup? Marco played the most matches of any Indy 11 player a season ago. Marco, one of five players in his third season with the Indy 11. Here's where you spend your energy. You try and press it, not allow him out. They've got a 50, 60 yard jog back and burn some of that energy you've got. Franco wins that ball. Some contact there, but equal contact going both ways. Vukovic will start the attack back up for Indy. He and Patterson weren't on the same page. And that's a foul on Larea. 
I don't think he's going to see a card for that, but he will at least have a conversation because of it. Yeah, just a bit overzealous. I don't think there was a way he could have got that ball. He will take some chances in every aspect of this match, given the scenario for Indy. So. Just a reminder, fans, that Soccer Saturday is heard year-round on 93.5 and 1070 The Fan. Even when the Indy 11 have a bit of a break the next couple of weeks, and it's a very short one. We'll keep talking all things Indy 11 all season long on 93.5 and 1070. Today's show featured Tim Hankinson, Marco Franco, the great J.P. Della Camera, and Dan Kelly, the voice of the Chicago Fire. Good, good show. Next week, a guest will be our halftime guest in Gerardo, Toronto. Newest member of the Indy 11. By way of 11 years with Cruz Azul. Of course, Pachuca from Liga MX will be here on June 26th. Ron has worked his way back in defense for Indy. This ball will tail to the sideline. It's good composure, you know, knocking it around. There's just, you know, not too many ways out of a pocket like that. Here you knock it forward, you get a chance to reset. The lead for Shipilotti. Yes. Shipilotti tried to get that ball to Deleuze, but could connect on the pass. Just enough of it, because he was in on Bush with, with that ball. And get in the numbers that Indy 11 will be sending forward in this match. There's going to be some 1v the goalie tonight. It's just John's going to have to make some of those heroic saves we have seen at times this year. Possession has been clearly tilted in favor of the 11 tonight, which has been needed. Even on plays like this, you'll have Bush take the restarts. You can throw more numbers forward. There's little things throughout the match. Good win by Patterson. Correa looking for Gordon. And that ball will be given up for a corner. And again, now you take more chances in the corner and throw more guys up, almost like you were trailing late in the match. Yeah, and the ball that's working for the 11 right now is the big angle ball. The ball that they're playing down the line isn't, isn't as effective for them as these big angled switches that they're hitting. Six in the box for Indy. Patterson to take the corner. Good serve. Cleared out by Perez. And Mayers races back to track it for Indy. Patterson, the target of Larea's pass. Mensing steps in front of that ball intended for Colin Falvey. Now here's the counter opportunity for Carolina. Yeah, and it was the other way. It was Shipolani yeah. on the far side. He had the run timed perfectly, too. Carolina taking their time here. And the best they can finish in the spring season standings is second with a win and a full three points. Flags up. Yeah, and the interesting thing about, the, the thing I love about the spring season, fall season too, is you know Carolina has been eliminated from winning the spring season. And so mentally now they have this whole psychological thing. Now they have to change. They're not competing for that, but they still need to try and bank points for the fall. In the playoff structure in this league, the 10 game spring season winner guaranteed a home playoff game. The 22-game fall season winner guaranteed a home playoff game. And the team with the two teams, rather, with the most points of the two seasons combined that did not win, uh, win either the spring or the fall, they'll be the road teams in the playoffs. We play a semifinal and a championship match. It's a two-weekend, three-match, one-legged playoff, if you will. And it just doesn't allow you to take any game off, any game. For, I, mean, I think up until the last week or two last year, you still had eight or nine teams that were that had a chance for that final four. 
Give away here by Carolina. Of course, we'll update you on other scores around the league at halftime and postgame, but frankly, really doesn't matter. Barring Fort Lauderdale getting up, say, 5-0 on somebody, then that might matter. Zayed couldn't get there. Mares keeps it Good in play. Save. Hit it, Nikki. Patterson deflected. It's a bit of a turf hop does that ball. Yeah, that first touch just got caught underneath him a little bit, and he probably should have pulled back the shot and looked to knock it across. Vukovic for Braun. Chips it forward. Header to Vukovic. He was offside. Sent the ball right at Fitzgerald anyway, but when Zayed sent the ball to Vuko, he was offside. Yeah, I think on this one, too, I think Vuko thought the ball was coming direct to him, and he was on sides for that ball. But then when it went to Zayed and it got that, uh, that touch into his space, he was off. And a player sense to some degree other than John Bush. This has got to be kind of a player's dream. Because every guy on the pitch has the freedom to move forward <laughs> whenever they want. Get the defensive responsibilities, just go for it. Left foot. Bush can't get there. We're tied at one. It's a heck of a hit. Heck the goal hit. by Abel Dawi, his first of the season. And while that temporary deflates the sails for the Indy 11, again, Indy's got to get to four. They, they can give up one the way the permutation works. If they give up two, they've got to score five. So in one sense, it's disappointing that you're tied, but you knew you had one to play with anyway. Yeah, and that's that's the space they give up in pressing so many numbers forward is the space right in front of the back line. And you know, you're know, you going to give a guy a look from 30 in this this situation, and <laughs> he just hit he hit the right ball. Abel Dawi has been generally the guy that has been taking care of the service with four assists. That is his first goal of the season. Goals have been at such a premium for Carolina this year. It's just their 11th goal of the season. No, they needed that. They needed that for so many different psychological reasons. And you hope that doesn't now spark them into a different uh, a different level of confidence in that attacking third. Abel Dawi, one of two players that has played every minute of every match this year. Connor Tobin is the other for Carolina. Fans, you can show your Indy 11 pride and get your exclusive IMCU Indy 11 debit card at any IMCU branch or online at imcu.com today. Wow, are you kidding me? Couldn't keep it in play. Holy smokes. Tremendous display to try. But even as much of a stretch slash Gumby move as that was from Gordon, he could not keep it in play. Good run by Franco. Let's get it back here. Sends it across. Couldn't get to Zayed. Right idea. Yeah, and you'd love to see Zayed making that run in front of the defender just to maybe get a get a touch on it, get a nick on it. Mayor's ball was not deflected. Goal kick for Fitzgerald. This portion of the match is brought to us by Community Health Sports Madison. Dream big, work hard, and finish strong. Good look from the BYB. Your perspective on life at this match at Carroll Stadium tonight. Another good crowd, as expected. A bit of a late arriving crowd because of the warm temperatures today. Eyes getting to the mid 90s. As it starts to cool as the sun begins to set. Another outstanding crowd on hand here at Carroll Stadium. Four largest crowds that India's played in front of this season have been the previous four home matches. And frankly, this should reach that top five status. Great snap. Advantage being played. Franco was fouled, but in the 11 have maintained possession. One of the great things about Falvey is he is just, he's a player to a head inside his soccer brain in these moments that he, he's, a, he's, he's closing down guys that are faster than him just because he's reading the game better. Black couldn't control that one. And Black, Mensing, and Rashawn McKenzie, who is now at Oklahoma City. Those three guys were phenomenal for Atlanta a season ago. But now 
defunct in terms of the North American Soccer League Atlanta Silverbacks. They have a franchise in the NPSL through the Silverbacks these days. But Atlanta played a 3-5-2 last year, which means a lot of responsibilities on the three defenders, and those guys were tremendous. Loved it. They, they, it was fun to watch them play. Gordon gets a whack and draws the foul in the process from Perez. All black, one of four players joining Abeldawi and Tobin alongside Brian Triver that have played and started in every match this year for Carolina. Patterson asking for a foul, doesn't get it. That's a, that's a tough ball, tough ball to play right there. And all the touches and all the, the combinations in this space. Well done by Falvey. Brilliant, just brilliant defending. All the touches in that space brought over all the Carolina defenders, so this, this, the, the ball needed to be an angled ball to the weak side. Braun just a bit offside. Time now for our Deodora soccer tip of the game. What did Colin Falvey do so well here, Brad? Oh, it's so brilliant because you look at, uh, at Brian Shriver. You put those two guys in a race across the field, he's going to beat Falvey by 20, 30 yards. But in this situation, Falvey knew. He just understood that Shriver was going to cut the ball back, and as soon as he did, he just stepped in between him and the ball and didn't allow Shriver to use his speed. Deodora, 65 years of fine Italian styling. Braun engaged in a pretty good battle across the way, trying to keep that ball in play. They get one here before the half. That's going to make that locker room a whole lot more comfortable. This is a bit of a giveaway by Carolina. Tobin immediately puts his hand up and says, my apologies. Tobin wore the captain's armband a season ago for Carolina. Nazmi Abeldawi has it on his left sleeve tonight for the Railhawks. See John Bush, I'm sure he too is looking forward to a match in Chicago on Wednesday. Having two separate stints with the fire in Major League Soccer, part of his 14 years in MLS. Becky. Abeldawi, now Shipilotti. Vukovic with a touch. Oh, and well played. Lareas thought that ball was going to hit the flag stand, which meant he had a chance to claim it before it went across the end line and keeps play going for Indy. Long distance run now for Gordon. Tobin able to get there. Just volleyed away from Omar Gordon. I think clearly this has been Lareas' best work in an Indy 11 uniform tonight. Absolutely. Whether he tried to deflect that pass or not, he did. Take him. Ball finds Gord. He's got both Braun and Zayed. The cross deflected, goes right to Fitzgerald. Contact made by Zayed. But, but wave it off. No flag, no, uh, no foul, but more importantly, no goal. Yeah, and I'll tell you, I, I, liked, I liked the early serve. It worked just a little while ago, but. Omar Gordon against Mensing in a 1v1 with space behind him. You've got to attack it. It's one of those plays for your side. You take a risk. You, you, you see if you might get lucky and get a no call there, but you know 99 times out of 100 that's going to be disallowed. Ball gets through. Nobody back post. Bush able to keep it in the field of play. And quickly on the restart. Turn and go. Finds Justin Braun. You know, one of the things that may be making Gorka a little bit more effective tonight is the fact that everybody's got to press up so more, so much. He's got a lot more space to work with in there. Fans for standing stats on the latest league news. Be sure to visit NASL.com. Well defended by Perez.
Advantage play. Kelly was fouled. Tough, tough, tough. Watch Shriver. Abeldawi might call his own number after scoring once. And this one clears the east end stands completely. Not as on target as his last opportunity on goal. I'll tell you what, I, I like that matchup with Omar Gordon against the edge defender. Andy Levin at this one almost playing a 3-4-3. They will not get lost in formational tactics. It's just everything forward. The attacking subs available for the Indy 11 tonight. Sanishu will be part of Povich in a midfielder's role. Braun the lead for Patterson. So right back to Braun. Braun tries to find Zayed. Ball behind him. Mensing got there first. Reynoso and Smart are out. A lot of the subs available are more of the midfield and defender variety. But frankly, it won't matter. If you enter, you're, you'll be told, go to the front. Vukovic with the deke on Schipolati. Fancy footwork continues from Buko. Smart play. Gordon. Benson got there first. Foul will be called against Janicki. Janicki not happy about it. There's Janicki still dealing. He has cleared the concussion test to be back there on the field, but suffered a facial fracture when he was here three weeks ago in that collision against Minnesota. But as you would expect, he's not wearing a mask in the match. Love that bottom. I think you can see why he's upset. I think this is probably the least amount of contact Greg Janicki is ever going to provide somebody <laughs> on a 50-50 ball. Off the head of Vukovic to the sidelines for a throw in for Carolina. Yeah, that, that looks like it might be affected by that sun. That sun is right in the eyes right now of these guys and that, that ball driven in the mid-level. For Tim Hankinson. Anything you change right now as far as how your team's playing? Yeah, you're creating opportunities. I like it. I, I don't think there's anything right now I make a move to. I think the big tactical adjustment is going to come with about 20, 25 to go. Where where you're at score-wise, where you're going to be sitting for the spring season, do you really press numbers forward, or do you say, look, let's try and bank some points for the fall? Shriver's opportunity off the side netting. Bush allows it to head out. So again, guys can push forward for the Indy 11. Now, reference John Bush and that return to Chicago. It's going to be interesting to see. A lot of times you see this in European clubs, and now you're seeing it here in the States as well. And normally when you get in those cup competitions, you play your backup goalie. Keith Cardona played and played very well against Louisville here 10 days ago in the Open Cup. Interesting to see with not having a, another match for 11 days after the match against the Fire on Wednesday, is it Cardona or is it Bush in goal on Wednesday? Think about that in a minute. Gordon. Ball cleared away by Carolina and Drew Becky. Corner coming for Indy. Yeah, I tell you, I think it's got to be John Bush. I think it's got to be Bush for a couple reasons. One is, you know, you advance to another round. Um, he's playing great right now. And I think, you know, you owe it to him. He's kind of a homecoming. He's got a lot of a lot of fans in that area. Such a good guy that, you know, Chicago embraced him. Patterson again, six in the box for Indy. Only Larea, Mayers, and Franco outside of it. And Larea and Mayers lurking just outside of the 18. Patterson goes back post. Goal kick coming. Ruled that Braun touched it last. I tell you, you looked at the, the first corner kick, and this is, this is a, something that I like about uh, Nicky Patterson is he recognizes what's working, what's not working. On the first one, Perez is a big body guy. He's standing at the top of the six on the front post. The last corner kick, Nicky Patterson wasn't able to clear him, so he went for the back post on this one. Well, I said, Ron, it might have been Janicki. Either way, the result is the same. Blues will settle this and allow some teammates to work their way forward. 
Well done by Gordon. The final five minutes in stoppage time of the first half, sponsored by Honda Manufacturers of Indiana, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. It appears that Gordon has energy for days. Will to be a clean tackle. Yeah, I tell you, I do, I do think they got ball at the same time. And, you know, Omar just made a 30, 40 yard sprint back to help out defensively and then had to make a 50, 60 yard run forward. So you got two guys hitting the ball at the same time. The tired legs are often going to be the ones that go down. I think we'd have a little bit of stoppage time with a couple of goals scored, but not an overabundance of it at the end of the opening 45. As it stands now, the Indy 11 need three more goals and to not give up any in the second half to win the spring season championship. The flick, Braun tries to track it down. Mensing plays it off to the side. Fans, you can find your perfect, honest to goodness Indiana getaway when you visit visitindiana.com. Gordon on the throw. Love to see Janicki up in there as well, flicking on. Keeping him back as of now. Lorea tries to flick it forward, didn't make good contact with it. Here comes the counter opportunity for Carolina. Shriver plays the cross field ball. Abuldawi play it back to midfield. Hold one minute of stoppage time is what we'll see to end the half. Shipalani couldn't control it. Then again, neither could Mayers. Abeldawi's on side, but can't do anything with it. Couldn't track it down. Asked about the tactics of the Indy 11. Anything you change if you're Carolina? I don't think so. I think they're finding that space right in front of that the, the front four, and they're creating opportunities from it. The shot, the goal, that's led to Indy having to step up and press that ball a little bit more, which is opening up some pockets for some balls slid, uh, slid through. A yellow card shown to Simon Mensing again. That's just part of the where the tackle took place, the opportunity it prevented for the Indy 11. And, Mensing knew exactly what he was doing with that foul. Our yellow cards brought to us by Morello's Uptown Bail Bonds. Mensing's quite the pro, and that is quite the professional foul. Tell you what, though, I like this. It gives you a chance to get some big bodies forward, get a good serve into the box, get into halftime up 2-1. Stoppage time about to kick in here. Patterson takes it yet again. Janicki got ahead to it. Falvey with the blast. Late black back to midfield by Carolina. Marco Franco will track it down. We've seen defenders score this year. Vukovic on multiple occasions. Greg Janicki as well. Falvey looking for his first with the Indy 11 on that one. What a ball. What a touch. Vukovic. Finish. Back of the net. <laughs> That's Justin Braun. Second goal for the Indy 11. Two goals needed now in the second half to claim that spring season title. What a beautiful goal. The old teammates for the last two years in Sacramento combined yet again. Vukovic, Braun, back of the net. 2-1 Indy 11. Third goal of the season for Justin Braun in third of the last four matches. Changes everything now. Changes everything at halftime. The smoke billows yet again from the Rickyard Battalion. Nothing here, nothing here, nothing here. Oh my goodness. Valvey got the ball first, and that tackle is the last oh. touch of half number one. Halfway home are the Indy 11. They cannot allow another goal as long as they maintain a three goal advantage. They scored two in the opening 45. They need two more in the final 45. 
That fact being reiterated by the Brickyard Battalion. They're back there behind that smoke, trust me. But two more is what is needed for the Indy 11. Tim Hankinson heading over to our interview location across the pitch, putting on the headsets as we speak. And Coach Hankinson is ready. All right, Tim, that second goal is a massive one for your team. Your thoughts about the opening 45? Well, you know, we, we switched into a 4-3-3 to start the game, feeling though, though three attacking players committed to putting pressure on their back four. We know they like to play out of the back. It was going to force uh, turnovers and give us more opportunities. And in reality, it did. I mean, we, we served a lot of balls, but just not, not the quality that we needed and maybe not the patience that we needed at times. But to get the first goal and then uh, to come back and not put our heads down after giving up one with the second goal, that'll that'll be a great way to go into the locker room. Anything that you change from a tactic standpoint or simply more of the same at half two? Well, you know, in the beginning of the first uh, 25 minutes, they weren't pushing up their wing backs up the sideline. And we found ourselves with our, our wings uh, in, in the three line uh, attack having to come back and defend that too much. So we made the adjustment on the fly. We were prepared for that. We were trying something and, and moved back into the 4-4-2, which I think is more comfortable for us. Off to a great start. Halfway up. Keep it up, Coach. Thank you. Tim Hankinson, head coach of the Indy 11. His team needs two more to claim the first playoff berth in franchise history. A goal for Zayed, a goal for Braun, and a goal for Abeldawi for Carolina as well. Indy leads 2-1. The newest member of the 11 joins us next on Wish TV. A little bit of a different flow in the halftime show tonight than what we've had the last few weeks because we've got a very special guest that's joining us off the top of the halftime show. Clearly lots to talk about from a 2-1 lead against Carolina, knowing you need two more goals to try to win that spring season championship. But a guy that's going to play a big part in the fall season for the Indy 11 and hopefully even beyond that. Gerardo Toronto, 11 years now with Cruz Azul in Liga MX. Three World Cup appearances for Mexico in 02, 2006, and 2010. And as of Wednesday, a new member of the Indy 11. He'll wear number three when you see him on the pitch for the Indy 11 in the very near future. Gerardo, welcome to Indianapolis. Why was this the right opportunity for you at, at this juncture of your career? Well, uh, I spoke with the coach and with Jeff, with Peter, and with Peter, and they told me about the project, uh, about the city, uh, and I was uh, really excited about it, so. I, it was not a difficult de decision to, to, to take. Um, I'm really excited. Uh, I want to play as, as soon as possible, but I, I just can't play uh, until July. So I'll have to, to train with, with my teammates and, and be ready for, for July. You and I were talking before we started the interview on camera. We're, I don't think we'll see the Indy 11 play this aggressively in many matches going forward, but it's got to be a fun 45 minutes for you to watch from the sidelines. Yeah, actually, they had. Um, they did great. Uh, Indy is, is is doing a high pressure, and that's wonderful. So so we can get the ball as fast as possible and attack them again. No? Uh, it's hot. The weather is hot, so that doesn't help much. But uh, I think they're they're going great, and we only need two two more goals. Uh, I I'm <laughs> uh, I I have a good. Uh, a good feel that, yep. that they, they'll, they'll do it. Uh, hopefully we're, we're, we're along the side with you. Obviously, you're just kind of getting your footing here in the States and, and in Indianapolis. You were around the team for a, a couple of days' worth of training sessions before today's game. When you get on the field, what do you see your role being on this club? Well, trying to work hard as, as, they, are, as they are doing, um, bring all my experience to, to, to the field, uh, trying to, to – Give the ball, the, the ball as soon as possible to the to the attacker, so so they can go and score. All right, three World Cups. Most people are thrilled to play in one. You had a chance to be a part of three different teams from 0206 and 2010. Yeah. When you describe your World Cup experience to people, uh, where do you start? I'm, I'm a lucky guy. <laughs> starting <laughs> starting with that, and then well, the three of them were wonderful uh, experiences. Mm -hmm. mm. I think in the first one in 2002, it's the the one that I play better. The other ones I play good too, but I, I enjoyed more the 2002. And the last one, it was great. It was in a, uh, in a long uh, 
it was a long distance from Mexico City. It was in South Africa. All the people were were great there. Uh, we tried to do our best. Um, we played against Argentina. It was a tough a tough game, but we did well. So uh, I, I, every time I, I speak about the the World Cups, I get excited, and I just have a feeling that. It's a wonderful tournament to play. Well, you talk about being lucky to play in three. We are very lucky to have you here in Indianapolis. Very thank nice you. to meet you. We'll see you on thank the pitch very, very soon. Yeah, yeah. Thank you very much. I'm, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Gerardo Toronto, our guest. More halftime show comes your way next. Halfway home for the Indy 11, not just in terms of winning this match, but in goals scored. They got to get to four. They lead 2-1 at halftime. Time now for our Ivy Tech High school player of the game. How much do you really know about community college? Find your answers at ivytech.edu slash FAQ. Young man from Carroll Junior Senior High School, Thomas Piotrowski. Congratulations, Thomas, on being our Ivy Tech high school player of the game. Time now for Out of Town Scoreboard, brought to us by the Crown Plaza Indianapolis downtown and the Crown Plaza Indianapolis Airport. Let them assist you with your Next meeting or event earlier today, full-time, Jacksonville and Tampa, 1-1. Ottawa and Ryle, also 1-1. Second half, Minnesota, Miami, nil-nil. Edmonton and Fort Lauderdale, they play tomorrow. And again, Fort Lauderdale at Edmonton to factor into the league title situation. We have to win by six. <laughs> so, a bit of a stretch against Edmonton. Here is the updated league table. Presented by McDonald's, proud sponsor and fan of the Indy 11. That includes the Tampa Bay result from earlier. Again, Indy three points back of New York. New York had the bye coming in this week. So they are sitting watching this match as we speak. And frankly, they're rooting like heck for Carolina at this point. You don't see the goal differential on there. You see the points. So Indy got to win and have to have a plus three goal differential at this point to claim that spring season championship. Yeah, I'll tell you what, I, lo I love the way it matches up. Let, let's say you don't get the goal differential, but you still come away with the win. You have the three points in the bank. You're tied in points at the top of the table. The Cosmos already have a, a spot locked up in the championship. So you, you enter the fall in the driver's seat for one of the spots in the championship. Your thoughts about what Tim had to say going into halftime as far as what he would like to see in the second half for his team? I I like it. I'm of the mindset where I like Omar playing up as a third forward right now. I like being that aggressive. I think it did stress the back line of Carolina. I think it did create some opportunities. You started seeing a little bit towards the middle, later bit of the half. Omar started tucking back into that midfield spot a little bit, like Tim said, going into more of the 4-4-2 the that the guys are comfortable with. But sometimes uncomfortable is good for players. And so put that third forward up there, play without a, a left mid or, or put Nicky Patterson out there and, and feed off that anxiety. Well, both teams momentarily will be back to action. No changes being shown for either side. But unfortunately, not enough time for an interview with Coach Clark from Carolina. We would say we'd like to get to anything post-game, but generally that would mean they would come back and win. So we'd like for our conversation with Colin Waiting in the fall, to be honest with you at yep. this point. Yep. Tell you one thing I like about the situation that, that the 11 are in right now, and a good conversation to have with players at this is like, hey, you don't need to come out of the gate. You don't need to score two in this first five minutes. You need two by the time that 45 is done. So break it up into smaller chunks. You need a goal every 22 and a half minutes. Focus on this first 22 and a half, being, being consistently solid on the back line and then looking to exploit those opportunities when you get them. And the early serve is on for these guys, all first half. You can tell those in the BYB have done the math as well. They know two more is what is needed. Carolina will have the first touch of half number two. Sun no longer a factor going the direction they are heading in, going toward the western end of the stadium here in this half. The Indy 11 can at least hang on and get the win. It would be their fourth of the spring season. Win or draw, it would also extend what would be a club record streak without a loss of 10 consecutive matches. Great look. Shipalani, the target from Abu Dawi. 
Giovanni continues to give chase despite Mares getting in the way. Ball be able to shield away Schreiber from that one and Bush able to track it down. It looks like those guys have played together their whole careers. You know, I mean, even before he knew Bush was coming out. Flick on by Braun. Tobin will play that ball off the side under pressure from Zayat. Falvey's already positioning his body to shield Shriver off the ball. It's like they're just connected on this different wavelength. And this is one of the advantages of, of Omar playing uh, as forward as he has been, is it gives the space for Vuko to get forward and attack here. And you've already seen the impact of it with two assists. Vuko will take his time with the throw in here to try to get moved some more bodies forward. Gordon's touch, though, too strong. Yeah, and I, you know, I, I, I like him. I like Vuko getting getting forward in the run of play, but Omar Gordon is throwing that ball right into the six. I think he's got to take those throw-ins in the attacking third, put a couple big bodies on the front end, try to flick it to the back side. Driver couldn't find a teammate to connect to on that ball. First match in Indy 11 history took place against the Carolina Railhawks April 12th of 2014. First win in Indy 11 league history came against the Carolina Railhawks in July of 2014. That, that's the pace of Brian Shriver right there. It's just, you know, he, he nicks the ball that Falvey's trying to deliver to get the throw in, and then the ball goes back to Falvey, and he presses it enough to get a turnover. Braun, take the space. Zayed points to the left side. Speaking of space, Braun found some. He also found a couple of defenders. Fencing and Becky. Vukovic has had that Midas touch in terms of passing tonight. To lose. Keeps that ball active and in play. Franco gets there first, though, for Indy. And much as the role that we kind of talked about Corey Miller had last year as kind of the third starter at center back, you get that same feeling about Franco at the right or left back position. Right back clearly where he's played more, but you don't feel like you miss much of anything Nothing. on the difference from Palmer to Franco. Off the knee of Mares, Gordon commits the foul on Abeldawi. Omar's not a big guy, but he does play very, very physical. You look at when the ball gets into his feet, how well he is able to shield bigger guys off the ball. Flag goes up. Nifty volley that doesn't count for Shipolani. We saw, we saw his kind of lefty mid-swinger. Yeah. From earlier this year, that it's Minnesota, I think. That was the uh, non home team goal of the year by my count. That was a thing of beauty that he struck. One of those season opening four wins for Carolina. They have not won a match since. Zayed tried to play the bounces and hoped he could turn it his way. Now a chance to counter here. Good read. Good read. It's such a smart play. Well done by Vukovic. Asking for a foul, didn't get it. Yeah, just a few too many touches on the ball. Once he got that, that little bit of separation, he needed to keep it moving. But what a step by Janicki there. You know, if the ball comes into Shriver's feet, Janicki's with Shriver in a 1v1 with 30, 40 yards behind him. That's the visual cue for Shriver to take him off the dribble. And instead of putting himself in that situation, he steps in and steals the ball. Franco. Played across, Fitzgerald is there. It's great work in the midfield by Franco to get that ball to Mares. For my money, Franco was the man of the match last week for the Indy 11. He's been awfully impressive again tonight. This sports the match is brought to us by Diodora. Diodora, the Italian soccer brand. Some real estate here for Perez. Sizing up his options. 
Calls his own number. Doesn't get through Falvey. Cipollani, though, in a dangerous spot. Good double. Good double. Bracket coverage from Franco and Mayers. The great thing about that play was Mayers came in and took the inside lane, so Franco knew he could sit into, the, into this pocket here and give absolutely no options to Cipollani. Long distance ball, little wind aided by Bush. That thing went 75, 80 yards. Great look. Gordon's on. Flags down. Gordon gets a deflection. Mayers trying to set up a shot. Gordon. Take the easy one. Take the easy one. You got Vukovic right there, and he's he's on with that serve. Fans, you can gear up at NASLshop.com, the fans home for all the latest league merchandise. It's the next time we have a league telecast for you on Wish TV, it'll be against the newest member of the league. Our first telecast of the fall season, three weeks from tonight, on Saturday, July the 2nd, will come from Puerto Rico. The debut of Puerto Rico FC. The lead for Vukovic. Brilliant. Zayed tries to settle. There's too much traffic. Not in a danger just yet. Whoa. Press it, press it, press it. This is when you got to sell out on here. And it leads to something like that. Patterson, deflection. Corner. Ball was deflected, corner coming. And Patterson races over, trying not to waste any time. Knowing you got to get two here in the second half. It's a great look by Nicky Patterson. Mensing was the player that steered that ball away from the net. And here again, you got to clear Perez. He's on that front line of the, the top of the six here. Gordon will go across the pitch to track it down. Balvey. Janicki. Oh, back across the goal. <laughs> oh, you just expected it because he did it earlier. It's to find Braun on the on the weak side. Now Shipolati on the counter. Four players streaming forward for the Railhawks. And Franco really got him clean. He defended. Shipolati doesn't think so. But the official immediately nodded and said, no contact there. Just keep moving the ball. Don't slow it down. Braun trying to find Mayers. Mayers slow it. Behind. Fitzgerald got a piece. That's a big save. That's two by Fitzgerald of that magnitude. Gordon wins this one away. On the cross, too strong. Zayed had just started to drift to the middle and not the back post. Time now for our save of the game and give credit to the opposing team. This one comes from Akira Fitzgerald. Our save of the game sponsored by First Merchants Bank, Bank Local Bank Smart. Visit firstmerchants.com for more information. First Merchants Bank member FDIC. A great effort by Dylan Mayers to outwork the defender to get behind him and get the ball. told to play that ball to the left side where Janicki has all kinds of space. Good decision. Flag stays down. Vukovic. Great ball. Fitzgerald is there. Just a bit too tall for Zayed and a bit too shallow for Braun. Abeldawi properly sees the play. Ball goes to the left side to Austin Deleuze. Who's spent part of the last five years with Carolina. 
Briefly left to play with Orlando City SC in their last non-MLS season with the hope of making it to Major League Soccer with Orlando City. Returned late in the fall of 2014, had a brilliant goal here in July of 2015. That was the come from behind win referenced in the first half, a 2-1 victory against these Railhawks a year ago here at Carroll Stadium. Schreiber deludes. Great, Gorka. Lorea keeps it away from Schipolani. Lorea is just chasing everybody at this point. Now Vukovic with a head of steam going. Yep. Yep, yep. Perez with the foul. And that's a good foul, too, because if, if Vuko breaks free on that one and you've got uh, Gordon and Zayed backside and as effective and accurate as he's been on the early service, you're in danger if you don't foul there. I actually thought he was going to foul him a little bit sooner. Uh, I hope he's not hurt. He's holding himself a little bit. Vukovic wants some help to his left. Nothing there. Patterson looks back post. Steered away by Carolina. Good ball by Kelly, the 18-year-old. Kind of played it to space. It's one of those plays you can kind of make as a high school kid when you're the fastest guy on the pitch. Yep. A little bit different when the pros are at a similar speed around you. And there's so much awareness, you know, it's, it's Kelly and Shriver. Those are the only two. So you can either try and take it yourself or you can involve a guy who's who's got some pretty good good pace and is in a 1v1 backside. Gordon to Braun. Not sure what Braun was trying for, but whatever it was, it didn't come out as planned. The tough part right now is the, the 11 are getting a bit gassed. You spent a lot of, of energy in that first half pressing, and now this game is going back and forth and back and forth. So even though it's a light jog in recovery, but it's another 40 to 50 yards. And then when you win the ball, it's another 40, 50 yards going forward. Abeldawi the target here. Schreiber on the cross. Falvey got there first. Two years ago in the spring season, a nine-game spring season. The Indy 11 picked up just four points on four draws. Last year in the spring, the Indy 11 picked up three wins. Double-digit points, trying to get that number to 18 here in 10 games this spring. Lorea finds Zayed. Zayed for Lorea. Couldn't get a controlling touch. And Tobin now. Play this ball back to safety. Shriver. <laughs> Goodness me, great ball. Some guys have foot speed, other guys have mental speed. That is Colin Falvey. Fans, you can find your perfect, honest to goodness, Indiana getaway when you visit. Visit Indiana.com. Onside is Mares. Wow. In the field of play is Mares. Are you kidding me? One of the three original members of the Indy 11 still on the team joining Brad Ring and Don Smart. Four players with Indiana ties on the club. Zayed flags up, one on frame anyway. But he had drifted behind the center backs on that play. And here's where you got to just elevate your focus a little bit. You know, you, you've got this ball coming in, and I know you're gassed, I know you're tired, but oh my goodness. I don't know. I think he was. I don't, right. I, again, it, I don't think the flag affected his shot. He missed the shot anyway, but no, I. Uh, at first glance, I thought it was clearly he was offside. At second glance, I think clearly he wasn't offside.
Tobin just plays that ball to his own bench. Go, get some numbers forward now. Quick restart looking for Zion. The lead for Braun. Braun with the left Ooh. foot. Frustrated with the effort. I'll tell you, one of the one of the kind of visual cues as a coach that you need to start, you know, thinking about a sub is when players are, you know, a little bit late in their runs, a little bit late in their recovery, starting to show those signs of fatigue. And so you hope that you've got players that, that can identify it themselves because then they're not going to be hitting shots like that. They're going to keep the ball moving and try and find somebody who's got a little bit fresher leg at that moment. This second of the match is brought to you by The Room Place. Get it at The Room Place. I'd say the clear choices for subs, before I can even finish that phrase, Duke Lacroix is about to enter the match. Lacroix and Ubi Parapovic, the two guys from an attacking standpoint that can join the fray. Gordon, the lead. Oh. Patterson wasn't on the right foot to go get it. No, but look at Justin Braun backside. Omar just tees that ball up and switches fields on it, and, and he's in. We are told, by the way, that Patterson will exit, so the thought would be Lacroix goes to the outside mid. Bears then slides towards the midfield. And Lacroix has the speed that you need in a scenario like this to create opportunities. Oh, my goodness. Buko, Mares, left foot. No. And ball is called. Oh, my goodness. But what a serve. Not that third goal. Turn off the smoke. No smoke necessary. Pass was smoked from Vukovic. Ridiculous. And I'll tell you what, that's a heck of a finish, too. He knows he hit it with his handball. That's going to break your concentration, but what a finish. Patterson races off, knowing time is of the essence. Lacroix enters. So Duke Lacroix, the second-year man from Pennsylvania, and the fastest member of the Indy 11, brings speed and fresh legs onto the attack. A good night for Nicky Patterson. Yeah, and that's something you pull him aside as you're putting him in the game. You say, hey, Duke, you know what? You're the fastest guy in the field. you got the freshest legs. When you have the 1v1, go. Don't slow it down. As you see a little bit of the smoke that was turned on because of the ball find in the back of the net, immediately it was whistled. Is no goal. Franco continues to control the pace of play. It'll be a homecoming for Marco against the Chicago Fire on Wednesday as well. Briefly play with the Fire in 2014, a draft pick of the Fire. Zayed. Sends it across, flag goes up. Mayer slots it through, nobody sees it, but now they do, flags up. Lacroix ruled to have been offside. I don't see it. Do yeah, you? that was Omar. Omar was offside exactly. in the middle there. Gotcha. Subs remain for Indy. All three at the disposal of Carolina. So two goals must be scored by Indy in the next 26 minutes plus stoppage time. I'll tell you what, if that next one happens, this place is going to go crazy. Fans have been tremendous as per usual tonight. Two subs now ready for Carolina. So they'll make a couple of changes momentarily. Great ball by Zayat. Mares. The lead for Lacroix. Vukovic brought onto the attack. Vuko. Ball deflected. Lacroix will win it back for Indy. I'll tell you what, Dylan Mares looks like he's found another gear here in this, this last 30 minutes. Gordon on the cross, Zaya the flick, Fitzgerald yes! running it away, but it's yes! off the side of the net, it stays in. One more needed. Zaya's got his second brace with the Indy 11. One more to go. 25 minutes left to play. Indy three, Carolina one. 
This place is going to go crazy. Goals four and five of the season for Eamon Zaya tonight. Beautiful ball by Gordon. One of my favorite broadcasters is Tim Brando. His phrase when the ball bounces off the rim, the iron unkind. The woodwork very kind to the Indy 11 on that ball. Fitzgerald got a hand to it, but the ball deflects to the back of the net. 3-1 Indy. Two substitutions for Carolina. Jonathan Orlando will enter. Nick Tadigway will enter as well. As Carolina goes a bit younger in terms of experience on the field. Orlando, a great story. He is a 28-year-old rookie. A guy that played college soccer briefly, was away for the game for many years. He's basically playing in an adult rec league in Washington, D.C. Has a friend that's a coach on the staff, worked his way into a tryout, and here we go. We've got mathematicians working on these things <laughs> in the truck. So the two tiebreakers at play here for the Indy 11. The first one is goal differential. Indy 11 is one back. The next tiebreaker is goal scored. Indy is one back. Tiebreaker three, foul called against Perez. Braun draws it. Tiebreaker number three is head to head. Remember, Indy beat New York by scoring in the 90th and 95th minutes back on April the 16th. And right now, that has put them one goal away from claiming the spring season championship. What do you think the ratings are in New York right now? Strong. Vukovic. I'll take it. And that should be a corner for the Indy 11. Now Patterson was the guy when he was in the match to take the corners. Mayers will take it here. This is where you got to want it. You just got to want it. Someone's got to be willing to outwork somebody else to the ball. Six in the box for Indy. Headed down, but not on frame. Janicki. Figures. Figures that Janicki would be the one that would work for it. I got a fractured skull, but I'll find my head on that ball. Gordon had a good look at it, too. We often say the Brickyard Battalion is at full volume. They are at a volume equaling the White Snake show that I was at on Wednesday night. They are in more than full song right now. Oh. The ball did deflect off the claw, but it's then ruled to be a bit of a nudge by Becky that caused it. So a foul and a throw in coming here for Indy 11. Didn't get much of it. He's trying to flick it on to Mayers. See the goals tallied tonight by the Indy 11 briefly in the upper left hand corner of your screen. Zion with his fifth, by the way. Currently ties the league lead for goals scored in the spring. Deflected by Mensing, could be a troubling ball. Fitzgerald handles it well. By the way, the three goals allowed by Carolina matches the most they've allowed this season. That earlier total came against Fort Lauderdale back on May the 7th. Tataguay. Great read. Taken My away by Larea. Goodness, what a read. the fact that Kelly, an 18-year-old for Carolina, Tadagoy, 17 years old, another academy player. They're getting some run tonight. Love that. Love the, the development of local guys. So if this match runs late, we got two kids to worry about in terms of curfew for the Carolina Railhawks <laughs> this evening. Portion of the match is brought to you by Diodora. Diodora, the Italian soccer brand. Oh my, 
Here we go. Mayers has some space. Lacroix sends it across. Mayers the header. Flicked away by Carolina. And Orlando unable to clear. He and Larea collide. That's a foul in Orlando, absolutely. Dangerous set piece opportunity here for the Indy 11. The last look on goal for the Indy 11. It's a tough one. It's a tough one because it's just hanging up there. Good job by Larea to win that ball first. This is this is a good spot. This is a good. This is right in. I mean, it's right at the edge of probably a, a really good shot. Vuko's hitting the ball great today. I tell you, I was talking to, to Coach Regan. He said they had some different ideas on some things for restarts this week in training. So they got a little, a little magic trick coming. It's all Vukovic. Vukovic got it through, but Fitzgerald had a good look at it the entire time. Substitution remains for Carolina, two at the ready for the Indy 11. Here's Orlando. Vukovic could maintain possession. Sent across. Dangerous ball that Deleuze couldn't get a boot to. And can simply put, if Carolina gets one more. That means the Indy 11 got to score two more. Great shield. 4-1 or 5-2 make no difference for the Indy 11. If it's 5-2, then frankly, they would win on the second tiebreaker. It would not get to the head-to-head. -head. Let's not test it, shall we? Gordon. He's been outstanding since he joined the club. He's been tremendous tonight. Ron is onside if he can get there. Mensing flicks it back to Fitzgerald. Ron could pressure, but do no damage. Tataguay. Finds his fellow youngster in Kelly. Double it. Driver. Malvi will clear the 18 just by a yard or two. Got some tired legs in there. Got to maintain a bit of possession here. It looks like Ubi Parapovic is about to enter for Indy. Volleyed forward by Falvey. And Falvey might have hit the expiration point. And it looks like he's going to be subbed in for by Ubi Parapovic. This reminder that the next match here at Carroll Stadium will be 15 days from today. Pachuca, Liga MX fame, will be here on Sunday, June 26th, kickoff at 1 o'clock. This is not part of the season ticket package. So if you want to see this match, you've got to buy tickets to get here. Indy11.com has more information. Falvey's been fighting through an injury. He did not play in the U.S. Open Cup match because of that injury, and the injury may have just triggered for Colin already before that last kick that sent him to the turf. Zanishu so Ubipartopovic was going to check in to replace him. So I'd assume that basically means Indy's going three at the back the rest of the way. Love it. Love the thought. So Balvi becomes the second substitution of this match. He will exit joining Patterson. Everybody will take this chance for a hydration break on both sides. I'll tell you what, I got, I got a hot take for you here, Rake. On this, when you look at, and this is, a, this is a lot like life in soccer, you know, you never know in a game or in a season what is going to be that defining moment. You never know which one is going to swing the game or swing the season. Indy has invested a lot in this spring, and there's going to be a moment that comes up here in the next 15 minutes where it's going to define the spring season, it's going to define the fall season, it's going to define this game. Someone's going to have to rise up to that moment. You slap some city barbecue sauce on that, my friend. Potter smoke and take brought to us by City Barbecue, where it's always a great day to eat City Barbecue. 
Let's see if that man is Sanisha Ubiparapovic. He of many years of Major League Soccer experience, amongst other teams, Montreal, the New York Red Bulls. The last two seasons, Ottawa Fury FC. And this was always a playground for him here. Simon Mensing now down on the turf for Carolina. And the third Carolina substitution might be Mensing. Tonight was Mensing's fifth card of the season. Mensing originally from Germany. Each team with one substitution remaining. And I think for Carolina, they're going to have to use it on Mensing. Tell you what, I like that. I think that's going to open up. I mean, it's, you know, you got Duke with fresh legs running at uh, an interior defender who's just coming into the game, didn't have the ample time to warm up because you weren't seeing this injury or, or cramp developing. It'll be Kareem Moses. Inadvertently referenced him early in the broadcast. Now he's entering the match again. Kareem, two years in Edmonton before joining Carolina, originally from Trinidad and Tobago. The substitutions all used up for Carolina tonight. Now for Indy, you've got 13 minutes of regulation, maybe the neighborhood of four minutes of stoppage that's, time. That's what I'm feeling too. To score one and not let in another one. Gordon asking for the foul, does not get it. But eventually wins the ball back anyway. Gordon just ramping up the speed. Gordon goes down on the turf. The whistle drawn for him. It was a weird fall. It looked like maybe took a knee to the head. It was he and Paul Black that had a come together moment across the pitch. And he is not the guy that Indy 11 wants to use their third sub on. Right there, that's the knee that got him after the play. Subs that remain available for Tim Hankinson in the Indy 11. Corey Miller, Daniel Keller, Brad Ring, Neil Schaefer, all defensive or midfield players. I think it comes down to two options there. I would generally think Keller. I think Keller, as far as a, a playmaker, guy that can hold the ball up top. And I tell you what, I like the thought of putting Corey Miller in and pushing him up top and just serving the ball forward and just he'll, he'll win every ball in the air. It wasn't thought that Ring would be cleared in any way for this match until really Friday from an injury standpoint, dealing with the knee issue. So his, he's been training all week, but really not with the idea of even dressing until a couple of days ago. You would think he might be good for a handful of minutes at most. Let's see if Gordon can continue temporarily the Indy 11 play a man down. Fans have gotten their money's worth tonight. The style of this match. They say necessity is the mother of invention. Well, Indy 11 have created scoring chance after scoring chance out of that necessity, knowing they had to score four tonight. One goal away from the spring season championship. And that'll be an Indy 11 throw in. Moses touched it last. This portion of the match is brought to us by Denny Excavating. Denny Companies tearing down the past so you can build the future. got 14, 15 minutes to lock up a spot in the championship at the end of the season. You have got to throw bodies forward. You got to pick up the pace. You got to press every ball. Remarkable is that you can clinch a playoff spot five months from now. Ball is I get didn't get through. Ball will find Tataguay outside of the 18. For Orlando, this is his third appearance of the season. For Tataguay, his fourth. The two of them combined had played 35 minutes on the year before tonight.
Gordon back on the field, by the way, for Indy. So they are back at full strength. Offside the call. Wow. Indy looking for their third home win in five tries so far. Earlier wins coming against the Cosmos and Minnesota United. Draws against Edmonton and Ottawa. Tobin just plays that ball to the fourth official. Get some numbers forward here. Gordon tries to find Braun. Braun tries to find some space. Couldn't maintain possession. That ball back to midfield. Tough touch. Shriver. Touch. Lukovic and Janicki retreat. Shriver tries to slot it through. Nowhere to go. Advantage play. There you go. Stay on sides. Lacroix trying to time out the run. Maybe Parapovic plays it to Braun. Instead goes over his head. Oh, the easier one was to Duke. The easier one, you know, he's got a right foot. Instead of trying to bend that ball that way, the easy ball is to Duke with a full head of steam. If he played that ball in front of Braun, it's still a great ball. But you're right, the easier play was to Lacroix streaking down the left side. Ball for Bush that no one could come close to latching on to. New York sits atop the spring table. Six wins, no draws, four losses. And the 18 points to win the spring season will be the fewest in the four years that this league has had both a spring and a fall table. Oh my goodness, what a touch. Mares. Give it to him. Off to the races. Mares, right foot, deflected corner. See, this right here is where you could use Corey Miller. Push everybody up. Push everybody up. Last offseason, we talked about the work that Mayers put in to be as match ready as possible. How much of a stride he made from his first to his second professional season. It's unbelievable. That hard work and conditioning kind of showcased on that run right there. Ball flick set it. in. Vukovic the flick. Get it! Pointer. Oh! Knocked away. Mayers with the step. Couldn't get there. Best opportunity at the fourth was right there. 11 race back. Tattagoy. Shielded away by Franco. Goal kick coming. And John Bush streaming for the ball for the quickest restart as possible. Here's the look at how close the Indy 11 came to that fourth goal. And you look, it was what, a week or two ago that Omar Gordon scored from a, an angle similar to that? That's the 18-year-old Jeremy Kelly that deflected that ball away. Lorea couldn't get it to Zion. Ruby Potapovich whistled for the foul. He's going to wonder how much energy the 11 have left. Not only can they score one more, can they prevent Carolina from scoring one more? You, you love seeing that shot. By the way, it is going to be Corey Miller. He's going to be the fort, the uh, substitution brought on. And he might be listed as a defender, but he's not going to be asked to play a defensive role here. Push him up front and just keep serving balls into the box. The big, bald assassin who is not bald. He hopes to be big and have some sniper fire for the Indy 11 here. Vukovic, Braun, Braun, Lacroix, Lacroix, the cross. Yes! Are you, That's the Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? Zion with his third tonight, and Indy 11, 10 minutes away oh. from winning the spring season championship. Oh my word. Our Schlage lockdown play of the game. The combination passing. Vukovic, Braun, Lacroix, Zion, <laughs> third.
out of the night. And in the 11, has to simply prevent Carolina from scoring. And there'll be a home playoff game here on November the 5th. Unreal. Unreal. For unmatched secure in a variety of styles and finishes, Chu Schlag strong has a name. And a bad man has a name, and Eamon Zayed. Third goal of the night. I tell you, I, st I still think you go Corey Miller here, and now you just you put him in the back. By the way, our final minutes and moments of this match presented by your Central Indiana Honda dealers, official automotive sponsor of the Indy 11. And I don't like the three backs right now. You got a lot of tired legs in the back half of this team. It looks like Brad Ring is going to be now the substitution. They will take out Miller at Ring. Zaya the flick forward for Braun. Chase it, chase it, chase it. Frankly, if you get one more, you've got a goal cushion now. But it's very fitting that one of the last standing of the original members of the Indy 11 could have a chance to be on the pitch here at the end. The lose trying to play spoiler. This is Orlando in the smoke. Orlando over the bar. Beautiful, beautiful. Perhaps he could not see the target because of said smoke. If so, that would be glorious. <laughs> Goal kick coming here for Bush. Player down for the Indy 11. And this might be where the substitution comes in. I think that is Mares. No, Franco. That is Marco Franco. The ring is a guy that can play that outside back if need be. Yeah. And really a missed opportunity by Orlando. You got so much smoke in the box. John Bush's vision is going to be crowded a little bit. You would think stoppage time is approaching four or five minutes. When I think of stoppage time for the Indy 11, there are so many thoughts in the last two years that come to mind. The excruciating wait for the first one against Minnesota when six were put on the board. That match really didn't mean that much. By the way, Frank, they're going to try to keep Franco in. They're bringing Larea out and bringing Ring in, which means they're going to ask Franco to soldier on here for a few more minutes. With those other stoppage time memories, Kyle Hyland's goal in the 98 last year for the Indy 11 to equalize that one. But let's again reference the moment that right now makes this math possible. 90th minute penalty scored by Zayed against the Cosmos on April the 16th. 95th minute game winner by Zayed to give the Indy 11 the head-to-head -head victory against the Cosmos, which right now serves as the difference in terms of the Indy 11 claiming the spring season championship. Here is Brad Ring, the young man from Rockford, Illinois, Indiana University product, Major League Soccer veteran. But he, Don Smart, and Dylan Mayer is the last three original members of the Indy 11 still on the roster, and Ring has a chance to be on the pitch to help cement the win. Bush with the restart. From having the fastest corners and fastest restarts to taking your dear old sweet time. Now the mindset for the Indy 11. Yeah, boy, I'd love to see another back in there. It's just three backs are just uncomfortable right now. Right now they have moved Vukovic in and dropped Lacroix back as an extra defender. scoring threats for Carolina. Shriver is the guy that comes first and foremost to mind, followed by Deleuze. Brad Ring. Ah. Ring won it for a moment, but couldn't track it down. And now a foul will be whistled against the Indy 11, but frankly, a stoppage is just fine for Indy. They're by a chance to collect some more oxygen as best they can. Now all eyes point towards the fourth official. Good read, Dylan Mares. To see how much time is going to be left in this one. Three I'll take minutes. It. I will take it. Beneficial to the home side. Three minutes of defending left to go for the Indy 11 to win the spring season. 
three, a rather large number for the Indy 11 tonight. Three points from the win. Three goals, the difference. Three goals connected upon by Eamon Zaya. And the third tiebreaker at this point coming into play. Goal differential right now, the exact same for New York and Indy. Seven plus seven. Great ball. Chase it. Yeah. Goals scored this season. 15 for New York, 15 for the Indy 11. The third tiebreaker is head to head. And that's what belongs to Indy. So here is the current season breakdown in terms of goals for goal differential. Now again, that is barring Fort Lauderdale getting a 6-0 win tomorrow at Edmonton. I would say that would be unlikely. Might have said 4-1 here might have been unlikely. Think about the Cosmos right now watching this and going 45 minutes saying, okay, Indy's got to score two more goals, not give anything up. We're okay, we're okay, we're okay. And now all of a sudden you're like, we're not guaranteed a spot in the championship? Gordon takes this ball to the corner. Oh, but he touches it last. It'll be a goal kick for Carolina. Just hold it there. He doesn't need to knock it off of him. Just hold it there. Moses will play this ball forward. So again, we cannot be officially definitive in terms of the spring season championship. But simple mathematics tell you. It's Talk. Indies. A little collision between Janicki and Vukovic. Mayers is there to clear it. 45 seconds remaining. Second consecutive home match in which the Indy 11 have scored four goals. They had never scored four goals in a league match until three weeks ago. Costly turnover. This is tatted away. Volleyed away by Ray. Defining moment, baby. Fifteen seconds left. Franco plays it back to Bush. Mm. Not exactly a great hey, 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 hey. Are you kidding me? Here comes the pitch storm. The Brickyard Battalion about to empty. <laughs> what a moment for this club. What a moment for this city. The smoke will bellow one more time. The Indy 11 gets to 18 points. Fourth win of the spring campaign. On the third tiebreaker, they surpass the Cosmos atop the league standings. Again, there is still one more match left to play. A little less anxiety for the Indy 11 in terms of watching that match with Fort Lauderdale than the Cosmos are going through right now in watching this match. But. Good luck telling the fans that there's still a match left to play. As that team is being mobbed and celebrated somewhere deep in that smoke, there are very happy members of the Indy 11 that feel they have punched their postseason ticket on Saturday, November the 5th. Look at that. Just look at that. The last pitch storm for the Indy 11 took place because of the team's first ever home win in October of 2014. That was just celebrating a W. This is celebrating a championship. Coming up in our Central Indiana Honda Dealers postgame show, we'll talk to as many members of the 11 as we possibly can. We'll update you on the out-of-town scoreboard. We'll recap this one. We'll show you all the highlights and talk about the upcoming schedule. In the far off schedule, as in five months from now, Planning a home game here on November the 5th. With one match left to go, the Indy 11 in the driver's seat for that spring season championship. They had to score four. They had to win by three. That's exactly what the Indy 11 did tonight. And Peter Wilt 
leaving the Indy 11 at the end of the spring season. On his way back to Chicago. <laughs> love it. Absolutely love it. That guy has done so much for American soccer. This is such a great way to send him out. Sometimes as a broadcaster, the best thing you do is shut up and get out of the way. I hear, okay, I, I take the hit. What a night for the Indy 11. What started with that man has now been carried off by the gentleman he is hugging in Tim Hankinson. The Indy 11-4, the Carolina Railhawks won. Back with the all-smiles edition of the postgame show when we come back here on Wish TV.